first health killer, obviously, are metals. And there's no particular order. So metals, root canals, cavitations, which stem from removal of teeth. So I go into metals a little bit. So the challenge for metals is always you, you use them as a dentist just to repair your teeth for one thing, to further bite on them. That's it. You can have various different metals in your mouth. So the most toxic one is actually the silver amalgam filling. Silver filling is totally wrong and was just marketing for years. It's not allowed anymore to call them silver fillings because it's not true. It's 50% mercury. They have to call it mercury amalgam fillings now. And if you know that mercury is the most toxic, non-radioactive element known to men, you shouldn't have it in your body. I believe it's outdated. And obviously, maybe 100 years ago, we didn't have any better solutions, but now we have. And I think if I have to remove it as highly toxic waste in my office, how can I place it into the mouth of patients or actually have, him, have them have it? So there's the toxicity of materials, very, very toxic mercury, but also the immune system. You have a whole immune system that is there to basically um, fight against foreign particles. And if you have any sort of metal, your body can become allergic. <music> Welcome my guest, Dr. Dominic Nitschwitz. He is a dentist and naturopathic, a world specialist in biological dentistry and ceramic implants, and the vice president of International Society of Metal-Free Implantology. With his father, Dr. Nitschwitz, co-founded DNA Health and Aesthetic Center for Biological Dentistry in Germany in, in 2015. Dr. Dom has exclusively used ceramic implants since 2013, placing more than 5,000 to date. A pioneer in the field of holistic dentistry, Dr. Dom's book, It's All in Your Mouth, explains biological dentistry and the surprising impact of oral health on whole body wellness. He trains traditional dentists in biological dentistry and believes that all health starts in the mouth. All right. Welcome back to another episode on Passion, Love, Pursuit podcast. I'm so happy to welcome on the show, Dr. Dom, and I'm going to have him pronounce his name because I don't want to butcher it at all. So welcome to the show, Dr. Dom. Pronounce your last name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Erica. My last name is Nishwitz. Okay. N-I-S-C-H-W-I-T-Z. Uh, Dr. 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 Dominic Nishwitz. Nish See? See, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try. It's all fine. Just call me Dr. Dom. That's cool. Well, so I met Dr. Dom at the Health Optimization Summit in London in the end of May. It was such a phenomenal event. Some of the most brilliant speakers as yourself. And as I mentioned to you, we did a brief little interview at the summit. And I was telling you, I think this subject is one of the most important subjects that so many people are unaware of, and that is that health begins in our mouth and so many things that really chip away at our health that actually starts in our mouth. And so we're going to go deep into that. And I know you're really big on health optimization. So you speak from a holistic standpoint of how to really optimize your health. And that again, what you talk about is how it stems in your mouth. So anyways, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And yeah, I'm happy to be here and share the mission with all you guys and all the knowledge and let's dive in, right? Perfect. Okay. Well, so first of all, I want to know what even got you into uh, bio biological dentistry. And I know that, you know, some people might not even be aware of what biological dentistry is. So first, how did you get into that? And just explaining what it is. Yes. So basically I studied conventional dentistry um, back in the day, and I was always missing something during the university. It was, it was very, it's a craftsmanship. It's basically to repair teeth. That's what a regular dentist does. Drill, fill, and bill is what they say. And I was just missing something. I didn't know what it was, but after university, I wanted to become a surgeon and you have to do your assistancy for two years. And the surgeon I was learning was learning from, he was really a great skilled surgeon, um, top notch, but on the other hand, he was a very old school dentist. By that I mean, he would still place 
the, in my opinion, very, very nasty silver amalgam fillings. And from my aesthetic point of view, back, back, back then, it was around about 15 to 20 years ago, I could never place it in anyone's mouth. And my dad is also a dentist. And I knew from him telling me that he wasn't doing amalgam filling at all because they were kind of toxic. But I didn't learn in university. So as I was starting my own journey about health optimization way, for, way earlier, when I was around about early 20s because of my own uh, health issues, this all matched together or merged together because I was studying nutrition and supplements and biochemistry parallel to university, kind of, just for me, for my physique, for my well-being. And when I had to learn about these amalgam fillings, because I told my boss, sorry, I can't do it, I had to kind of like know why. And then this whole universe of functional medicine, of detoxification, of heavy metals opened up. And this kind of was the biochemistry and the supplements and all these things I was learning about from fitness and bodybuilding and all these things I was doing five years ago. So it kind of opened a new universe and I realized, wow, the part that was missing was that I couldn't really help patients getting healthy, but that was my purpose actually. And yeah, this took me on a journey to find out how health actually starts in the mouth and took me quite a couple of years. And I was very interested obviously in, let's say, thinking outside of the box and see why people get unhealthy teeth. What can we do in terms of, let's say, just better materials? What would be biocompatible? Because I, if I don't do any amalgam fillings, what can I do then? And what are the problems with root canals? And I discovered a whole, a whole new universe and kind of got addicted in the field of what you now would call health optimization or 20 years or 15 years ago, that wasn't even existing. It was just me being on a journey to find solutions for me personally, but then also at that point of time, I wanted to help patients getting really healthy and at the same time helping them with, with the conventional dentistry or with the high-tech skills that I always had. So biological dentistry, I kind of innovated the next level of biological dentistry over time. And nowadays I would call it the overlap of or the merge of high-tech dentistry with functional medicine and health optimization slash biohacking, which is kind of the same things. And the goal is obviously optimal health. And in my opinion, this starts in your mouth and it's just the next level. It's just further developed. And there's more, like you said, it's a huge holistic field. In my opinion, health starts in your mouth and the mouth is kind of like the entrance to your whole body or it's the entrance to your gut system, actually. Right, right. Okay, so what's so in interesting, first of all, how long have you been doing this? So I basically I graduated in 2008 and I initially started with all this because I was searching for my own health five years earlier. So I started with the whole thing 20 years ago. Wow. Okay. So health optimization. And you're based yeah, in Germany. Life, half life. Yeah. Wow. And you're based in Germany. I'm correct. Yes. I'm based in Germany. That's where yeah. the accent comes from. Yeah. <laughs> great. So what I want people to understand. So is it still today not taught in dentistry school and conventional dentistry, these toxic elements? Yes, basically the university or the curriculum in university is still the same. It doesn't really change. It was already outdated when I was studying. So my dad was already telling me, dude, what you're studying is already outdated. And luckily he said it actually, because he said, just do it. It's the entrance card and you will decide afterwards what's coming. And luckily I was always questioning things and asking for the why and just wasn't accepting uh, what I was learning because I thought, huh, it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. And still the same curriculum. It, the university really is a bit slow when it comes to these things, even though uh, there's tons of research out there, but it's not necessarily in the curriculum. So you have to see dentistry kind of like as the entrance card and it's there to repair your teeth, fill your holes, work against pain and maybe do aesthetics. That's basically it. You don't have an over, overall holistic view over the, on the whole body. That's not so, what we're talking about. So that's what I think is so important for people to hear is that there's many schools these days that don't 
update their uh, knowledge that they're sharing. So when people are learning from experts, they have to question what is true, what is not until kind of dig further, like you did, like question, is this the best route? Like we are wise enough to be able to research on our own and dig a little deeper. And this is what I think is so powerful because I shared with you and because somebody shared their knowledge and I listened and I questioned it and I looked further that I would say saved me of possible problems later. And that is implants. And, um, I want to dig, go really deep into that, but one of the things I'll share. So I, I had to get an implant, one implant, and I didn't have dentist dentist insurance at this point. So as you can imagine, it's very expensive. <laughs> so I had the uh, tooth removed and I uh, didn't at the time want to go through and putting on the screw because it was really expensive. And so I waited and I waited two years. So I had no tooth for about two years. And then luckily, because I waited, I heard a friend of mine, Jesse Golden, she's a whole, she's a whole lick sorry, a holistic practitioner. And she has very much knowledge in non-toxic living. So she shared, she was doing some dental work and she shared that she was doing a um, ceramic implant or she was sharing something along the lines of that in zirconia. And so I digged in and, you know, researched a bit. And because of that, I went to my dentist to put in the screw or the surgeon. And I said, I want a zirconia implant. And he's like, Hmm, we don't normally do that. He's like, everybody uses titanium. That's been done forever in a day. Like there's history on it. He's like 99, like 98% of people do titanium. I'm like, well, that's good. I want zirconia. Can you do it? And he's like, yeah, I could do it. I've done it like a couple of times before. I'm like, okay, I trust you. <laughs> so, cause I do think you have to go to the right person that knows how to use the certain material. That's very important, but I, I trusted him and it did seem like he was knowledgeable cause he knew of it. I think a lot of uh, dentists don't even know like the secondary option, which is bogus and crazy. So anyways, long story short, because of that, I have a zirconia implant and instead of titanium, which is traditionally, again, probably I would, I guess it's like 99% still get titanium implants. Yes, that's totally correct. Nine, yeah, I would also say it's 99%, maximum 1% of all the dental surgeons use ceramic implants. And that's my specialty. I'm a ceramic implant specialist and I train dentists to do this and I've placed over 5,000 pieces so far. So yeah, that's really, if you would compare it to sports, I would, I needed to do this in order to get my knowledge into regular dentistry because otherwise they wouldn't listen. So it's kind of like a competition. It wasn't really a competition, but there were, were times like, let's say 10 years ago when I really were into like doing a lot of implants. I wanted to do a thousand pieces a year just to have the knowledge, the practice and everything, and then be able to kind of like sneak it through the back door that the most critical part in order to for ceramic implants to osseo integrate so heal into your bone mm. is your nutrition and your lifestyle and all the health optimization strategies because they only heal in a healthy body whereas a titanium counterpart you could just basically throw it into the bone and it will just heal in kind of it actually tricks because it's an ongoing chronic inflammation which keeps the implant at spot and yeah so um, luckily, I got in the top 10 worldwide for these ceramic implants, and now I'm using it. And the funny part is, now they are, they are like magazines, it's like the general dental magazine, which like 10 years ago when I was writing an article about root canals and the problems, they would say, ah, oh, we cannot print this. It's like too conspiracy theory or whatever. Even though it's good, very well researched, we cannot print it because it would mean that we need to extract those. And then 10 years later, they asked me, can you write an article which has 25,000 words about ceramic implants and the, like, like how to make them osteointegrate, which means heal, like stuff like this. And we combine health and aesthetics. So that's an aesthetic outcome, but we have ceramic implants underneath. And if you see this, wow. no patient would you, would, if they had the option, I guarantee you nobody would use a metal screw, a black one, if you can have a white one. And then on top, being more aesthetic, it's also more biocompatible. Like you did the right choice. A zirconia implant is basically a neutral stone, so to speak. Yeah? Mm. Zirconia is full ceramics. 
and it's electrically neutral, which is in this world super, super important because you know, we're having EMFs, we have 3G, 4G, 5G, they even talk about 6G, we have wi fis So any metal anywhere in your body will be an antenna disrupting your body electrics. Yeah, you're kind of like a battery. And I knew that already. So I was a surgeon placing titanium implants and I knew this will not help patients because I also knew root canals are a problem. So I had a root canal that I had to remove. I had an, a, a, an option that really doesn't do anything better, like a titanium implant and a root canal is kind of like the same thing. Yeah, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit better, but it's still metal. So I needed to find a biocompatible solution. And this is all, already 10 years ago. So I'm doing this for 10 years and it's still the 1% doing it. And you also have to know from all dental surgeons or all dentists, only 10 to 15% are surgeons anyways. So most of the dentists don't even do surgeries. They refer you. Right. So general practitioners refer you. Mm -hmm. And from these surgeons, most of them, they call themselves implantologists, or at least in Germany, only do about 20 pieces a year. And I'm kind of doing 20 pieces a day. So it's really a difference also when it comes just to the practice. It's just like training for an, a sport, an athletic sport. And you just need repetition at one point. And then it becomes second nature and this is what I wanted to have and yeah was needed to be accepted kind of in the dental world but obviously now I'm more ele elevating into a health expert leading on these stages because it's the mission is about helping the many not just dentists obviously we need to train both like patients and dentists that there is something extra that they can go and do. Yeah. And that's the thing is that's why it's so important to at least dig a little deeper than what you're told. And this goes with going to a traditional doctor that, you know, you go to having a thyroid problem or whatever it may be is when they say, okay, we're going to give you this pill question that like, is this the best route? Like, is there another option? I know you, you kind of merge things with functional medicine. And so it, it's very key to get to the root cause uh, of the problem. And there's so much to go into. And as you, he, if you're watching on YouTube, you were able to see the picture he shared from the article. And also you could probably see I'm shaking my head like constantly because it's just so shocking to me that so many people that this is still not mainstream yet. Like this knowledge that you've been doing and sharing and, and doing in your work for so long, it's still not out there and it, it's slowly rising the knowledge of these toxins and these problems that are in our mouth. And so since we're on, I could go so many different ways right now, but since we're on the implants and you touched on root canals, I know you share, there are four uh, problems that start in your mouth. If you could kind of walk us through that, um, as you touched on why the metals are harmful, but can you kind of go a little bit deeper in there to crystallize like the metal fillings and why we must address them and everything? Mm -hmm. I'm always talking about the three health killers that are lurking in your mouth and there's actually four, but the three- That's why I mentioned ones. it because I remember you said there was four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course it's correct. And on, on stage on the Health Organization Summit, I used this to question the audience and I basically asked, who of you had any metal restoration done? And 30% of the audience just stood up. I don't know if you were there, but uh, yep. I asked, did you have any root canals? Yep. Another 30% stood up. And the last question was, did you have your wisdom teeth removed? And then basically the whole audience stood up. And this showed me because it was on the health optimization summit. That means people there are already on health optimization standards. So they know about nutrition, lifestyle, but obviously they are there on that convention to learn more and they still are not superhuman. Otherwise they wouldn't be there. So they're looking for new solutions. And then it is time to look into your mouth and have a biological dentist examine it. And the first health killer obviously are metals and there's no particular order. So metals, root canals, cavitations, which stem from removal of teeth. So I go into metals a little bit. So the challenge for metals is always, you, you use them as a dentist just to repair your teeth for one thing, to further bite on them. That's it. You can have various different metals in your mouth. So the most toxic one is actually the silver amalgam filling. Silver filling is totally wrong and was just marketing for years. It's not allowed anymore to call them silver fillings because it's not true. It's 50% mercury. 
They have mm. to call it mercury amalgam fillings now. And if you know that mercury is the most toxic, non-radioactive element known to men, you shouldn't have it in your body. I believe it's outdated. And obviously maybe hundred years ago, we didn't have any better solutions, but now we have. And I think if I have to remove it as highly toxic waste in my office, how can I place it into the mouth of patients or actually have, him, have them have it? So there's the toxicity of materials, very, very toxic mercury, but also the immune system. You have a whole immune system that is there to basically um, fight against foreign particles. And if you have any sort of metal, your body can become allergic. You might have heard of nickel allergy. Most people are actually allergic to nickel. And a lot of times there's even nickel in a titanium implant, even though you don't know. Yeah, because they are like kind of a little bit um, not really 100% um, titanium. So there are different grades of titanium. So you have a titanium implant and you're allergic to nickel. So your immune system will be uh, aggressive all the time. You can become allergic to gold, which is a big thing in, in dental alloys like gold. Like a lot of patients out there have a crown that looks like a tooth, but underneath it's a metal construct. So it's a... Um, it's ceramic fused on metals. So gold, just basically say, there's no functionality of any of these metals that are used for biting or repairing in your body. It's just a foreign particle and it has nothing to do there. So we have toxicity, we have the immune system can become allergic and both. And the third component I already mentioned is that any met metal in your mouth or in your body can become an antenna in this loaded world because your body is electric. You are kind of like a battery. That's why we ground, that's why we use electrons from the ground and from the sun. And obviously your saliva is an electrolyte. And if there are different alloys, there will be kind of like a little current that you can measure. It's kind of like a battery. It's called the galvanic element. And then you have a battery in your mouth. Then you get ionized metals in your body. And if you now understand that metals always will lead to a chronic inflammation and some sort of immune reaction and also plays a toxic burden in your body, I believe it shouldn't be in your body. It's not a way to be optimal healthy. In my opinion, it's not even able to be healthy, which is absence of disease. Most likely there's something that's bothering you just because, because you have these methods in your mouth. And of so, course there are some people that can compensate a bit more than others, but it's not so necessary. Before we move into the other two that you mentioned, I do want to go a little deeper on the metals. So for anybody that possibly still has metal fillings in right now. I know it has to be safely removed. So if somebody is hearing and they, they're hearing all this and it's eye opening to you, rightfully so, because it's pretty shocking of how extreme it could be like toxic and causing inflammation. How does somebody safely have them removed? And if let's say, cause I've heard this story a lot, oh, you'll go to a dentist and they'll say, you're, it's fine. You're not having problems, right? So don't worry about it. Don't touch it. What do you say to those people? So actually it's correct. If you don't have a dentist that knows how to safely remove these amalgam fillings, please don't do it. Don't freak out right now because of this information and just go and hop to your dentist and just drill it out. That actually leads to the biggest problems. And this is why a ton of my chronic sick patients came in because they had their, they thought, okay, they had to remove the amalgam because it's toxic and then they develop any sort of symptoms afterwards. So you really have to find a dentist that is, let's say in the US, you can look for a smart certified dentist, S-M-A-R-T, like smart. Okay. And that means safe metal amalgam removal technique. And you can at least be, make sure that they will remove it safely because anyways, when you have an amalgam filling in your mouth, you're kind of chronically intoxicating yourself, but it's only two to three micrograms per day, which is a millions of a gram. And it's mostly odorless and it's like, you don't even smell or see it. And it's just the vapor that's outgassing. But if you drill it out, you have like all these particles coming into your body. There's tons of more uh, mercury vapor, which is the most toxic thing about it because mercury vapor goes in any cell without protection. So please don't figure out, work on a strategy. And I have a whole online course produced where you will learn all these things and we can go deeper into this late, later. But um, I'm, it's very, very much important for me that you understand how to do this, when to do it, how to approach it, how to prepare your body so that the timing is wisely. And we don't do any further harm 
besides the ones that you already had for 10, 20, 15, 25, 30 years that you were wearing these things in your mouth. And then if, if somebody goes to a dentist and they're like, oh, you're fine, they're not having problems, right? Like, don't worry about it. Would you say, no, don't listen to that person, go to a smart doctor to have them removed? So when your goal is optimal health and you have any sort of symptoms, or if it's just your goal, I believe you shouldn't have any heavy metals in your body, especially not the root source, which is still the amalgam filling. That's the most People talking about heavy metals in fish. Yes, that's correct. There is heavy metal pollution everywhere in the world and also in fish, but still having amalgam fillings in the mouth, which is like a hundredfold more of mercury that you just daily have in your body. So remove the source and your body can heal itself. That's it. If your goal is optimal health, and you know, medicine, conventional medicine kind of defines health as absence of disease, mm -hmm. yeah, which is in my opinion, a zero on a scale from one to hundred. So if our goal is not optimal health, we should invest and the dividends should be health. And then obviously you wouldn't want to have any amalgams or metals in your mouth, but go there with a strategy and don't just let it rip out. So yes, it's probably not the right doctor for you. Yeah. He that's... probably doesn't even know because he didn't learn in university and is probably not interested in biological dentistry or the overall health optimization. Yeah. You probably that's... are, otherwise you wouldn't listen to this show. Yeah, exactly. So I know anybody listening to the show obviously cares about their health, their well-being, and they're working on being the best they could possibly be. And health is wealth and everything. So, And, and yeah. then you cannot have any metal in your mouth. It's just a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So talk. So that's first and foremost. And then moving on to the two others that you mentioned. So yeah, basically what we do, we, we remove all metals, even the titanium implants, that's possible. So the second, the second one, the second splinter that's holding you back from optimal health is a root canal treated tooth. A root canal treatment is basically initially a pain treatment because you have, it's your own fault. You had a big cavity and then bacteria went into your main channel in the nerve and you had massive pain, trigeminal pain, it's insane. In the dentist is just the dentist just wants to help you and has to help you with a root canal. What he does is basically taking out all the vital parts of the tooth and filling in, let's say, just plastic. It's not fully correct, but let's just say fill in some plastic and then keep the tooth, which is not alive anymore, for biting. The problem is we only clean that big channel, but the time if you look at a tooth from a microscopic structure, you have very, very a lot of or a ton of tiny dentin tubules, which are the perfect cave for microorganisms, for anaerobic bacteria that will lurk in there over time. So because the main channel is clean, there's no more immune system in this tooth and we can get bacteria in there. It's becoming a chronic infected part of your body. And if you have an Im immune system, your immune system will produce any sort of inf inflammation, for example, a cyst at the tip of the tooth or whatever. So we have a dead tooth, which can rot over time. It has these dentin tubules, which is about one kilometer or let's say 0.6 miles. And when you add, add, add them where bacteria can lurk in, so chronic infection, then also these infections, these bacteria obviously have the metabolites, which are again toxic for the body. So this, you can also become allergic to them. Those are thyroiders and mercaptanes, just highly toxic sulfur compounds. Again, it's just a little bit outgassing every day. But it's again a little bit you have to detox and you can become allergic to it. It's unnecessary. It's, it's rotten, infection and toxin and immune system. So it's kind of like no medical profession would leave any dead tissue on your body. It's just not accepted anywhere in, in, the, in, in the medical world. So if you had a, let's say a gangrenous food when you're a diabetic person or like a, like your septic finger or whatever, you have to take it away because it's clear that toxins, cytokines, infections will spread within the whole body within one minute, actually. And this will lead to problems. And as it's probably like a tinier dosage, your body's kind of able to compensate it. And a lot of people are not able to compensate it. That's why they have chronic inflammation and problems on the teeth. In the real world, if we had an acute problem in our teeth, we would just get pus and inflammation and your body would just throw out the tooth. There is no root canal treatment in the real world. So the root canal treatment is there to save your tooth for one thing, it's biting, but it leaves a dead tissue 
which become toxic, infected, and again, stresses on a daily basis, 24 seven, epigenetically your body. And you don't even realize it, but it's so, there. It's so crazy. Okay. So I'm going to share a little bit of my stuff. So I was ta- talking about my implant, right? So my yes. implants on my left side, my upper, and I had that implant after I have, so I have two root canals on my left side as well. And I believe they are right surrounding that other tooth or two in front. I'm not sure, but I have, I've always had a problem on my left side. And I, the last problem was that implant. So I had the root canals beforehand. I still have those root canals. So I've, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. You still have root canals? Yes. I'm going to come visit you. (laughs) You sure? Yes. No, no, I'm I'm actually kind of serious. I tell you in a second what we can do about it. And that is really next level for you and your health. And it's super easy. And tell us your story, how you, well, what it took for you to take out the tooth, how long it took to get your, your implant and how, basically how long you waited until you had your, your new tooth. Yeah. Say. Cause as I was talking about, so, so like I said, I had, I've always had problems on the left side and my upper left side. And, and then I had those two root canals. And like you said, like when anybody that's experienced the point where you get a root canal, you're in such extreme pain, something has to happen like ASAP. So, um, so that happened. And I, I, I think I went to a really good dentist that did it. No problems to my knowledge. Right. But then I always had problems on that side. And then I had that tooth that needed to come out and, uh, the tooth was removed. And then I waited two years to get the zirconia implant, but it was, you know, a process of healing and all these things. Like you have to wait quite a while. I forgot how many months, but you have to wait a few months of healing. So you could put in the screw. So there, there's a process to it, of course. Uh, but my question is, in regards to the root canals. So for anybody listening, I'm sure there's somebody out there that has a root canal that's listening. What do we do then? Like if I'm coming to visit you, what am I doing? (laughs) Because I'm going to book a trip to come out there. (laughs) Yeah, always welcome to come everybody. Most people are coming from all over the world. So it's less from Germany than from everywhere else for the last 10 years at least. So that's my specialty. We do immediate ceramic implants. That means I take out your tooth, I clean everything perfectly. We use ozone. We use a lot of things to clean the socket. First and foremost, we don't rip out your teeth. We take it out very gently because the most important thing is basically the socket, which is afterwards, after you remove the tooth, where it sticks in your bone, it's called the socket. And you have the bone and you have the, the gum around it. And like yourself, if you had your tooth removed and you then regularly, which 99% of all dental, dentists do, wait, for about three months until you get your cone beam, and then you might see, oh shit, there, sorry, my language, there's a bone loss. We need a bone graft. Then it will take another six months until you get your implant. So what we do is we use that time of removal of the tooth as strategic point to implant a ceramic neutral one straight away. Why? Because there's anyways a hole and your body wants to heal now most importantly. So now is the, the time for the best healing. And I just placed a ceramic implant as a tent pole in that socket to keep your anatomy. And this is possible in above 90% of all cases, even in molar areas. But of course, this is something that not a lot of people do and you need a lot of mm-hmm. practice for it. But as I said, I've placed over 5,000 pieces and 80% of those are immediate implants. So wow. there's a lot of um, training went into it. And I'm very happy to share this and also train dentists on it because it's it's a game changer imagine you take a tooth out like in the molar region like you had it it's not a big deal to have a gap for two years who cares nobody sees it but what about this tooth some yeah. people have the incisor a root canal with a huge uh huge cyst. imagine yourself having an incisor pulled and then your dentist tells you oh well let's say about three to six months you will have a gap there and you have a light, tiny flipper that falls out every once in a while and maybe afterwards your nice aesthetics is gone because the bone is gone and I can tell you, I take it out, clean everything, disinfect everything, and then place a zirconia implant straight away, like I showed you on this on the thing, and then put a crown on top in the same city. So you always a have crown a too. So a temporary crown or a- yes, it's okay. going to be a temporary first, but it will look kind of like the same. Mm-hmm. So it's really next level. And then 
you you have it at the end it looks like this you you see at the end you find nice crown work like beginning and end and this is from let's see from here okay. to here that's about four months that's when the normal dentist says oh now is the time to place the implant or maybe yes. you have to do a cone beam a, a graft and whatever so wow. this is really next next level and i believe it's pain free we anyways take out the tooth and therefore for me a ceramic implant is not it's just a tool for me. It's a tool that we need. Unfortunately, you lost your tooth. I'm sorry about it. Better would be your, your ideal, healthy, natural tooth, which is a life, not a root canal. That would be the best strategy. And obviously, you should learn about how to keep your teeth healthy. But it's luckily we have a solution that if you have a root canal, we can place it. Here's a nice picture of a, like all these white things that you can see on these x rays. This is all ceramic implants. Like, wow. That's how yours look like thousands of them. And I'm ha very, very happy that we have this solution. But as I said, it's not about a ceramic implant. It's about your health first. And the good thing is a ceramic implant only heals in a healthy body and healthy tissue. Mm -hmm. This is also why we need health optimization, why nutrition plays a huge role in my practice, macronutrients, micronutrients, and we prepare our patients and um, in order to make this possible, yeah. I can tell you, if you're interested, I can tell you the exact process of getting an, an immediate ceramic implant, the whole procedure. Yeah. I, you know, I would love for you to touch on uh, it because actually that that's a good thing you pull out that again, we're working on health optimization right here. So if yes. you are not healthy in general, if you're having inflammation problems or you're not eating right or whatever, and then you do this procedure you're saying that the chance for it healing might be uh, limited because your body is off balance regardless. So what then would you do yes. in preparation? You couldn't have said it better. In my opinion, most patients out there are not very well prepared to do any kind of surgery at all. Let's say maybe not in the health optimization sector or the health sector, but most people out there are in hibernation mode, chronically inflamed, eating the wrong things, are pro-inflamed, so to speak and are lacking too many nutrients to be able to heal. So what we do is we make sure that at least, let's say four weeks prior to surgery, in average, you would start changing your lifestyle and nutrition to, be, to eat as many nutrients as possible with, at least, with the least amount of calories, so to speak. We, there's a food design concept I've developed over time that is basically all my knowledge packed and make it easy for patients. There's also the bone healing protocol that all my patients are on, which is focusing on macro to micronutrients so that we have no any sort of deficiency. So it's kind of like an 80% approach until you see me for the health optimization week. And then in this week, when you kind of boosted your immune system is very well, you just already did the 80% yourself then we will take care of everything. I'm always planning the full case. It's called like always the whole mouth, like health starts in the mouth. That means we will remove all metals when you're here safely, I'm, that's for sure. I remove all the root canals and place ceramic implants if possible and needed. I will remove all the cavitations. It's kind of like bed and breakfast, it's always included. And we use IV nutrition surrounding. We have hyperbaric oxygen chambers. We have laser IVs. A, you name wow. it, like all the cutting edge therapies. Why? Because I want to support your body in its healing. I'm just also with my surgery. It's just helping your body, getting rid of these chronic splinters that are 24 seven stressing you. And at the same time, I want you to experience and learn as much things about optimal health that we can. It's kind of like an ongoing learning journey. And during this time, you will also get an individualized nutritional approach I can then touch on your individual mindset. Maybe you're carnivore, maybe you're vegan, whatever. I will teach you how to think in nutrients and make sure that you're able to heal that, that surgery without even a big swelling. We use a mask that's cooling from aesthetic surgery. So it's kind of like always all the it's wisdom. A spa visit. It's a hmm? spa visit. <laughs> it is kind of like i call it a health boutique um yeah. it is a spa visit and it's a, it's just starting in your mouth but we use everything in order to it, see see logically i want you to heal i i'm not a fan of doing surgery honestly 
I love, I'm very good with my hands and I'm a good surgeon, but I only actually can do it from my, like, let's say empathy, because I know I can help you with it. Otherwise, I'm not the guy who can cut in people like just like that. It's a skill I acquired. I'm very good at it, but um, I'd love to share with you knowledge that you don't even need to go see a dentist. So basically taking us out of business would be the ideal yeah. strategy for the next 30 years or for your kids and my kids. But unfortunately, or fortunately right now, there's so many people that are suffering out there. And even though they have all the health strategies on point and they're eating already nose to tail and the liver and whatever, but they're still not really superhuman. Like you saw, said in the movie Root Cause, then it's time to look into your mouth. You guys, yeah. if you have not watched that documentary Root Cause, there's another that will open your eyes to everything he's sharing today. I think you could find it just on YouTube if I'm correct, but. Yeah, it was actually 2019, um, right before my book came out, it was on Netflix and I was very happy about it. Obviously it's just a documentary. It's not too scientific, but a little bit and there are good people speaking about it. And, um, but they took it down. So, and yeah. it, was, it was my dental colleagues and I can understand because the, the dentist, the biggest dental profession is, the, is called the, the endodontologist. A endodontologist is a specialty in conventional dentistry that only does root canals. And yes, endodontologists do the better root canals. That's 100% sure. They have the skills. They do it with the microscope. But still, it's a dead tooth. Still, it can become inflamed. It's still a problem. And 200,000 endodontologists pet petitioned against this movie and it took it down from Netflix. So that's why it wasn't there wow. anymore. And it led to, into all this conspiracy. And at the same time, my book came out, I had massive shit storms anyways for eight to 10 years until they finally accepted it. Like with everything, when you're an innovator, like Gandhi said, or Schopenhauer said at the beginning, you get ridiculed then or ridiculed, then you get violently, violently attacked. Yeah, yeah. I had that it, luckily already. Wow. So I learned from it and now, Fortunately, all my friends or all, I call them all the young and wild dentists that were with me in university, which kind of said, dude, go away with all your stuff, your conspiracy theorists. They are now, like, they had their mindset switch and they wow. are really doing it because they can feel that's fulfilling if you help patients become really, really healthy. Imagine you have a patient that is looking for 29 doctors and is still depressed and he just does everything, he's still not healthy and you just pull one tooth and uh, four cavitations. And 80% is better on the next day. How does it feel? Yeah. So, you know, the conventional dentist is always, look at the movies, Hangover. It's just a dentist. Everybody says it's not a doctor, you're a dentist. Um, you don't have any idea about health. That's, un that's unfortunately true, but you can change. We actually have a big role in between chronic illness and optimal health because it starts in the mouth. And we kind of ruined it with our craftsmanship over time because we didn't know better. But now we know. We can use it, and that's why I call it the next level. And every a young and wild dentist who's interested, just DM me or contact me because we're teaching and we have to. Because I cannot help any, I cannot help the many because I can only do 25,000 surgeries in my lifetime. That's what I calculated. Wow. But I want to help at least 1 million. So I need a thousand of the young and wild dentists and health coaches. And I believe any health coach and um, personal trainer should know how to diagnose a. Uh, panoramic x-ray to see okay are there any metals are there any root canals are there any cavitations okay i don't put these people on a chelation they have to see a biological dentist they can start with their nutrition they can start with their nutrients but there's at one point let's say within the next six months if it's really about optimal health they might need to see a biological dentist to optimize everything yeah and, and you know it's fascinating i'm sure you've heard about this but the breast implant illness Yes, of course I know. So it's kind of the same thing. Like it was ignored for so long. People still doing impl implants have been happening forever. Right. And it's a foreign object going in your body. But then, you know, more came out about it. But at first it was like, oh, that's not true. And a lot of uh, doctors that do implants, they, uh, you know, again, turned away from it saying that's not true. And then some started doing explants but there's still doctors that do explants and implants. So imagine that they know so that it, yeah. So 
if somebody is complaining that they're worried about BII, which is breast implant in yeah. illness, and sorry, we're getting a little off topic, but this is the same idea, right? I know, yes. <laughs> so the doctor will take out and do an explant correctly, right? Remove the toxic material, the whole capsule and everything and the scar tissue. And, and then he will also still do implants. So just think of those two together. If your doctor is doing explants because he knows that, okay, I know how to properly do it to remove the toxins and everything, but I'll still do implants if you want it. You should question if you're going to the right doctor, right? Yes. <laughs> Yes, and this is the same with conventional dentistry and biological dentistry. It's the same thing. And it took a lot of my friends a few a couple of years, the earlier doctors, to realize if they do kind of like a mixture of dentistry and biological dentistry, it doesn't work. You cannot do a metal implant at one patient and the other one gets a ceramic one. It doesn't really work. As soon as they do 100% and realize, okay, that's the next level, it's kind of like with anything new like crypto or whatever, you just have to understand that it's something new and we evolving constantly. As soon yes. as they did it hundred percent, then the results come, then they can help their patients because they also obviously need to experience and experience all these things on themselves and learn on themselves. And that's also one of my teachings that you always start with yourself. You basically model, teach and preach what you do. I have to, um, and have to actually be healthier than your patients. Otherwise you can't really help. Yeah. And, you know, full, full new mindset. And I love to, to share and teach and co-elevate with other wolves. And yeah, that's why I also do as many podcasts as possible to get that knowledge out. Yes. And like Maybe. I said, I, I think this is one of the most important topics that people don't know about. So also just to touch on, because you mentioned wisdom teeth and the cavitations. And as you said, almost all people will stand up and say they had their wisdom teeth out. I have, uh, I think you've mentioned, I've heard that you have too. And yes. so what does somebody do? Cause that's, that's like our former life that we took out our wisdom teeth. So. Yes. It's just standard in the Western world. It all starts basically with breastfeeding and actually already in the womb, but let's just say you had your wisdom teeth removed because you had no space for them or you needed braces, which is common or normal in the Western world then you're probably not prepared when you come into surgery. You just go there, at least I was as a teenager, was smoking cigarettes, eating crab food, and then just went there because my mom said, oh, tomorrow we're going to the dentist and they remove your wisdom teeth. It's like, okay, let's do it. And then I remember I was 14 years old or 15 and my cheeks were swollen like this. And I knew my mom wanted to give me a Big Mac afterwards to eat just because I did it. And then everything got inflamed and pus came out and they needed antibiotics and stripes and developed a dry socket. So that's about 50% of all um, teenagers do. So it heals secondarily and your body was just not prepared. Again, it was in hibernation mode. And what you develop over time is something called, in layman's terms, a cavitation. The medical term would be FDOJ, fatty degenerative osteomyglotic jawbone, or you can also find it under NICO, NICO cavitation. And problem here is this one isn't even told in university. It's not medical science in university, even though there are tons of studies showing it, even from dentistry. There's one of my friends and um, I call him the Yoda of cavitations because he's already 70, 72 years old. Dr. Johann Lechner from Germany hits his life's work to deal with cavitations, to study it, to bring out paper in PubMed and Google Scholar. And nobody listens to him still. And it's my work then to bring it into conventional dentistry because those chronic inflammations that develop in your jawbone, you most likely don't feel your dentist won't tell you about it because he doesn't even know about it. And they are at, at this spot. And if you see it from an energetic level or your autonomic nervous system level, the wisdom tooth area is connected to the meridian system of heart and small intestines, as well as the central nervous system and adrenal glands. So basically, one of the most common symptoms is chronic fatigue. Is skin issues, eczema, rashes, irritable bowel syndrome, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis. Why? 
because these inflammations harbor bacteria. And from the US, I know a lot of patients come in from the US because we have a big mold issue in the US mm. because of your house buildings and mold spores live in there. It's so nasty if you do, if you open it up, but it's such a relief for these patients. I could send you tons of testimonials of patients that kind of like on the chair, like I'm doing the surgery and I always talk you through it and tell you, okay, what you have to experience because at the spot, it's not that bad. It's just like, you kind of take out the splinter. You maybe feel it a little bit, but you might feel that your back pain goes away or you can breathe deeper or your stomach just feels different or you just go into a parasympathetic nervous system because at the trigeminus, there's always big parts of the vagal nerve, which is the parasympathetic nerve, which will activate your yin. And this is what we do with that surgery. We finally get you out of chronic stress, chronic fight and flight and bring you into healing, which is rest and digest and then support your body for the next ongoing phase to really heal. And this is always included in our planning because cavitations are kind of like the hidden epidemic too, again, at least in the Western world, mm. because we remove those teeth. And it actually can happen with, every, with any teeth, but most people, also younger ones, and those are the ones that are interested in health optimization, most likely have their wisdom teeth removed. And I, for years, I had only very, very sick, chronic sick patients, like extreme cases of cancer, ALS, neuralgia, but then I had a lot of entrepreneurs and high performers and I always have a spectrum. So very sick or very athletic or very high performance, they need the same treatment. They need a 10 out of 10. In the middle, you maybe can play around and you're okay and you can compensate for it. But if you want to have the edge, then you need the full approach and then cavitations are a big trigger. Chronic wow. silent inflammation in your jawbone and your jawbone still is an extension of your brain. This nerve, trigeminus starts here in your brainstem and it comes from your mouth into your brain and from there to your whole system within a second or within 24 hours at least and this is stuff that is shown for years it's shown for 100 years that they placed toxic materials in, a, in a box and look where they can find mercury found in the, in the ganglia in the hypothalamus in the pituitary in the whole nervous system and then you have your entrance again. And whatever you, whatever you um, find about um, anything we talk about, if insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance or IL-6, like cytokines, like loads of cytokines, TNF alpha, IL-6, they can all just stem from your mouth. So this could be a trigger for your diabetes, for your insulin resistance. And you didn't even know that's just a tool. So you really have to get all the knowledge and science that we are talking about anyways, applies to your mouth too, because it's a part of your body. That's just basically it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And there's so much we can unpack about that, but I'm not going to go deeper because I think people could, if they're, if they're interested to know more about that, I want them to uh, either get your course that you're talking about and to further, you know, gain more knowledge on the symptoms they're having and see if their root cause is coming from inside their mouth cavitations, root canals or, or whatnot. So one thing I think is important to touch on, first of all, I want to honor your time. So how much more are you good on time? I didn't even check time. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to touch on, um, you speak about the microbiome in your mouth. And I think this is really important because a lot of people know of the gut microbiome and how important gut health is, you know, uh, 70% of our immune system, but you touch on the importance of keeping a healthy microbiome in our mouth. And so can you kind of touch on that, what, what that means and explain a little deeper, and then what do we do to make sure we're keeping a healthy microbiome? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I always say oral microbiome first, gut microbiome second. Why? It's kind of logic. What is the entrance to your gut system? It's your mouth. It's kind of like a huge tube that goes from your mouth to the back door, and that's called the gut system. And obviously, your whole digestion already starts in your mouth and also your immune system. And the most diversified microbiome in your whole body is actually in your mouth. And this is because you put everything in your mouth and your nose and you breathe a lot. And let's say the oral microbiome changes within... 12 hours. I thought for a long time it, is, it takes about three days, but I have a friend here in the University of Tübingen in my hometown. He's studying microbiome and he's studying 
how food changes the microbiome within 12 hours. So that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you eat a standard Western diet, um, you most likely feed bacteria in your mouth that, that strive on sugar and gluten containing grains and all these refined things. And they are also um, very much connected to cavities like Streptococcus mutans is one of the biggest leading germs, so to speak, um, for cavities. And in comparison, a, there's a new study from Germany, from Freiburg. They, they tried to look at um, our ancestors and they realized, wow, they had a lot of calculus and plaque, but they had no really, they didn't really have tooth decay or any sort of gingivitis or gum inflammation. How would that even be possible? So they just put the control group on a paleolithic uh, diet and the regular group was eating the standard Western diet. And only one month in this um, phase, no change in oral hygiene, 100% reduction in inflammation. And then the hypothesis was maybe toothbrushing isn't so important overall and it's more like the nutrition will be on point. So your oral microbiome will change with your nutrition, but also your oral microbiome changes with everything that you already had previously repaired. If you have a root canal, you have a dysbiosis. If you have cavitation, you have a dysbiosis. If you had amalgam, you kill your good bacteria also further down in your gut, and then you get dysbiosis, especially candida and other fungi, mold, etc. Because fungi love heavy metals, they come to help you because they can store it in their outer shell 10 to 100 times more in their cell membrane than you can. But of course, it's a parrot. It's a, you the host, they want something from you, most like your energy. We also know that um, it leads to mitochondrial patia, which is basically a reduction of ADP production, C can also stem from root canals and toxins in there. So root canals, again, I told you they harbor the anaerobic bacteria, so it again is a dysbiosis. So if you have an all natural baby breastfed, it's a totally different microbiome than the, let's say the formula fed baby. And it's a totally different microbiome when you do a keto diet to a standard diet, or if you do a more paleolithic approach. So the, the bacteria that get fed it, that like protein and healthy fats, win if they get that food. The ones that um, like, let's say refined sugars and grains, if they get this food, they win. And they are connected again to your tooth decay and your gingivitis and your gum disease and your leaky gum, which is the same thing as leaky gut, already starts in your mouth. So they are able to find germs that are normally living in your gum, uh, in your mouth, in your oral cavity. They find it in hip joints. When they replace hips, they found Paul Furona's gingivalis, which is a typical periodontist um, um, bug living in your mouth. How is that even possible? I can tell you how that is possible. It's called leaky gum. Same as leaky gut. This gum here is outside body. It's skin. If it's bleeding and disrupting and it's not tightly connected because of an inflammation on a metal, for example, it doesn't grab on the tooth anymore. It's opening. And for bacteria like porphyronas, porphyronas, it's kind of like the Niagara Falls. And then they can go inside your body straight here. That's why I'm also not a big fan of flossing because flossing will always lead to bleeding. Bleeding is leaky gum, same as leaky gum. You're opening up your system, same as cutting yourself here. You know, then people would disinfect if they have a cut here because they know bacteria will come inside of your body. Skin is outside body. Gum is outside body. Bone is inside body. And we don't want to have um, germs inside your body. So periodontitis is gum disease. After the gum disease comes bone disease. It's the, the tooth structure, the, the, the mm, the apparatus that holds your tooth in your socket. It's called periodontium. If you have gingivitis for a long time, your chronic inflamed immune system, lots of stress, then bacteria, etc., and, and enzymes get activated that kind of like, yeah, they, it eats, they eat up your collagen and then you get looser tooth. And mm -hmm. periodontitis is really a big problem in the Western world. And periodontitis is directly connected to diabetes and heart disease and as root canals are directly connected to, to depression. And like, there's so many studies that you can find and dig out, but you don't learn about it in university, unfortunately. And nobody looks into the mouth. Even though people talk about nutrition and everything, then you realize at the end, they still have amalgam fillings and thought they can trick everything with nutrition, even though it's the basis. But um, toxins installed 24 seven, you cannot biohack your way around. It's not possible.
Wow. You just provided like so much, so much in there. So one of the things you did mention that flossing, you're not a fan and everybody knows when you go to the dentist, are you flossing? Oh, you should floss more. And I, I do remember I was talking about my problem on my left side. I bleed every time I uh, floss there. So yes, the problem with, the problem with flossing is that most people are not, a, not gentle enough to do it very, very softly. In nature, in my opinion, there is no flossing. So obviously I would use a floss or a toothpick if there's something stuck in between my teeth. And one caveat, if you had a lot of dental work previously done, it's not your normal nature anymore. So the gums are different and maybe food gets stuck more often. So you may, might need to floss them. But for a healthy body, healthy teeth, nice gums, tight gums, you're only ripping it open all the time. So I'm not a fan of flossing. The interdental cavities, which is supposed to not happen if you floss, this is a whole nother story. Wow. Initial cavities, it's just a sign of an osteoporosis of your tooth, it's basically a lack of minerals over time and a lack of um, the right mineral balance in the saliva and in your body, which will lead to tooth decay in the first place. So this is something that is totally reversible, but not by flossing, it's by nutrition and you, you're getting in your nutrients. That's why I said I teach thinking in nutrients. Yeah, okay, so, and I've also heard that actually using mouthwash is not good for your microbiome. So can you explain that? Because a lot of people no. use mouthwash. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Chemical mouthwashes are, or antiseptic or antibacterial mouthwashes um, like chlorhexidine is a, a typical one or Listerine is a typical one. They might provide a nice smell, but they kill your germs. They kill your bacteria and your immune system is depending on these bacteria. Those bacteria in your mouth, they will help you digest your food. They will help produce NO. They will help produce, they will help you get various nutrients from your food and also protect you through your system. So that's kind of like sterilizing a cavity. It should be as diversified as possible. That's just this most stupid idea, in my opinion, that you can do. There's, it's like disinfecting yourself all the time. Obviously, we are prone to do this uh, in this, let's say, germophobic world, but actually eat more dirt would be better to, for your immune system, like kids do. Play in dirt, eat as much bacteria as possible. And don't disinfect your oral cavity. What you can do instead is coconut oil pulling. That's an ancient Ayurvedic uh, strategy that I'm using in my office or myself personally every day, and um, which will soothe your your all like all the gums. It will also because it's uh, coconut oil is a fat will will bind the fat soluble toxins. It's also strong. It's um, coconut oil is antiviral and antibacterial because of the lauric acid. And what you do is just super simple. Make it a habit, use one um, tablespoon of coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil every morning while you maybe make your breakfast, put it in your mouth, switch it around gently for five to 10 to 15 minutes. And then most importantly, spit it out, don't swallow because it will contain lots of things and you will see it changes. That's one of my three oral healthcare strategies. Oh, so second great one to would hear. Be, second one would be a tongue scraper. Um, ideally you use a copper tongue scraper. And the third one would be toothbrushing, not too often, and especially not with a toxic toothpaste. It should be something that you would eat. No fluoride, no SLS, no titanium dioxide. Just look for most natural, um, healthy toothpaste, if possible. Yeah. And you're good. That's it. And the rest comes from your li daily lifestyle and nutrition. And, and again, at one point, you might need to repair what has been previously repaired in a biocompatible way. But all my patients, I don't want to see any of my patients after finishing this as a dental patient again. Yes, they can, can come in for health optimization, for IVs, for hyperbaric, for infrared zona, for you name it. But please, please learn that you don't need to uh, want to go to a dentist anymore. But then again, you don't be afraid. You're not afraid anymore of a dentist. It's more like you said, it's more like a spa treatment. People are looking so much forward to their treatment. They're like, wow, finally I get my health back and, or at least parts of my health. I'm not saying that this is everything. It's just one, three or four big onion layers of your health journey to optimal health and is a part in your mouth. And of course the 80% that I'm also teaching in the course is stuff that you already do. Like all the strategies that you can apply that will, like you said, in, will be an investment in your health nutrition, micronutrients, blood work, whatever you have, like grounding, nature, all these things, um, supplements. This is something 
that you can do right away. Mm -hmm. But again, maybe at one point, find somebody who is skilled to know how, what to do uh, when it comes to all health optimization. And wow, that's so good. So just to add to that, so everything you shared is so valuable and I'm trying to get in the habit of the oil pooling. But one thing that I do, do know because I've done oil pooling is that you do not want to spit it out in the sink. Most importantly, it will clog your sink, spit it in a toilet. That was just like what I've learned. I, I think Ben Greenfield shares this too, because it, it definitely clogs just the, the oil, the pipes. So yes. Or spit it in the in the bin or the trash. Uh, yes, Ben is also doing the coconut oil pulling. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, he does everything biohacking wise. <laughs> but uh, yeah. the tongue scraping. Just out of curious uh, curiosity, what why do tongue scraping? Because of a lot of the let's say the bad smell bacteria. It's not totally correct, but a few of these bacteria will will live at the ground of your tongue, like far in the back, and your tongue should kind of like be like your tissue here, not reddish, but more like pinkish. Mm. And if there's a fur on top or like coated tongues, it's most likely just bacteria living there, building their biofilm. So with the tongue scraper, you just go like back and forth from, from the, from, I don't back. know what is English, from the backside and then to the front and just clean it out and do that every day. And then you will have a nice um, clean tongue. It's an ancient Ayurvedic strategy. And copper, why? They also use copper to sterilize their water because it's just, antibacterial and this is not an antiseptic mouthwash this is just a uh, metal that is killing a little bit of the bad bacteria and That's also okay. to nice breath actually there's also a question that i get a lot what about my breath why is it smelling again oral microbiome dysbiosis wrong diet wrong nutrition wrong materials in your mouth inflammation okay. toxins Im immune system all these things one once and for all that will lead to a bad smell. It's not always the keto smell. It's also everything else. That's so great to know. Oh my gosh. There's and this you really know, and you have to tolerate so many smells you cannot imagine. Oh it's my really goodness. Bad. So there are doctors that are afraid to look into the backside of the patient, but actually, if you just see it realistically, the oral cavity is way more dirty for a lot of people than the other way around. So you understand what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Okay. There's so much. Or First not if you're cleaning it. Then it's right. Like there are studies showing, for example, if you kiss somebody, you transfer all this, this microbiome. And if it's a healthy one, it's obviously amazing. But if it's, if you kiss, kissing your partner and he has a melon fillings and root canals, you get his toxic bacteria and stuff. So really take care of this also for your partner and your mom and your dad. So like, even though you self have, think you have everything perfect, maybe your, your parents are suffering and they should look into their mouth to optimize health. This is so good to know. And, and one thing you also pulled it in there, you mentioned uh, fluoride free. So some people, as you know, there's, there's plenty of toothpastes that have fluoride in it. So why is this important to avoid? Again, it's just the fluoride. The, the theory is that it will just Build, it gets built inside of your enamel and makes it more strong, but it also is a disinfectant. Again, it sterilizes your cavity. It's a, a well-known toxin and in higher dosages is also neurotoxic. So again, a cavity is not a chemical deficiency. It's more like a nutrient deficiency and it's not needed actually to do that. So there are toothpaste that, for example, use, um, let me see what is in English, hydroxyapatite. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I co uh, pronounced correctly, hydroxyl appetite, which is better because this will also be built into your enamel and clean. But I'm always going fluoride free, free SLS free, titanium dioxide free. Basically, all the white coloring is titanium di dioxide. It's actually banned in Europe now, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure if it's banned in the US. It's all the mixture. Just white, just find something that is as natural as possible. And there's also a few DIY recipes out there. I'm sure Ben has yes. one recipe on his website. He has a recipe for everything. So Yeah, so valuable. Okay, so you did mention you have a course. I want to know where people find more about you, find out to get this course so they could, you know, get more knowledge because you just provided so much. And this is like the opening the gates to optimizing your health by you know, addressing what's in your mouth. So where can people find you and where can people learn about this course? 
so basically the easiest is to find me on Instagram. It's at Dr. Dom one, Dr. D O M E and number one. And there is a link in the bio. It's called a tap bio. If you click on a tap bio, you find my clinic, you find my book, you find my YouTube channel, you find a shitload of uh, podcasts I did over time, articles, research, uh, resources. And there will also be the course. The course is in its fi- it's almost finalized. We did a beta, a live beta course to see if this if this health transformation that I was looking for will work because this course is going to be onboarding for all my clients. It's going to be onboarding for, for future dentists, onboarding for my staff, but especially for all my patients. Because imagine you use the time until you see me and you learn in the course and then you meet me. We can go so much deeper because so much of information, the 80% you can already apply and do. And this is what my goal is. Give as much information for all you guys out there so that we all together co-elevate and change the way how medicine and dentistry and whatever is done to really get to optimal health. And this is how we get to earth. Like nature is uh, perfect there. We come to earth and just epigenetically, we change our lives and right. our life uh, changes our um, physique, well-being and spiritual, mental, everything is one. Yeah. And yeah. I hope that I hope that all these creations that I'm giving, that's kind of like my love language to systemize all these things that I was able and to learn from my own experience and my own um, early childhood problems. I'm very happy and uh, like very grateful afterwards. When you're in there, being depressed, whatever, when you're 20, it's not so cool. But if you learn the solutions and realize, okay, wow, going through that hard times actually helped me now to help you guys. That's a blessing in disguise. And I'm happy to share it and especially meet all the other ones like yourself and other people that are on this health optimization journey and we can make it a big movement i'm quite sure Absolutely. we make health fashionable i say it over and over again we you will was, have what was that line you just said we will make health fashionable like let's be the health avengers you know what i mean like the avengers let's say we are the health avengers yeah and i love that yeah, there's love the that. captain america of the health and there's the iron man and you know there you in, go yeah instead of like let's say like doctors or health coaches need to be the role models on, on the covers of magazines because then we can inspire. That's what we do. If we, if we model, uh, teach and preach all the things we do for years, this is how we inspire. If we heal ourselves, and that's what we do with our, our patients, every patient that comes to me is on the same mission because they're there to heal themselves and then they will share this knowledge openly with other people that are suffering. And there are so many suffering. It's chronic disease is the epidemic, epidemic for 20 years. It's in the Lancet. It's in New England Journal of Medicine. We die from things that we shouldn't die from. And we're not right. like living our beautiful life that we should because it's a, like, it's amazing that we are alive. We are all, everybody of us has a passion and we can all unlock it if we first start on working on our health. Absolutely. Like I said, health is wealth. It's everything. So I love everything you shared. So everything will be in the show notes. And of course you could see this on YouTube or, you know, be listening to it on your favorite platform. So I know you just dropped so much wisdom, but I have to ask my last question. Sorry. I ask yeah. every guest and this could be anything you want to share. Uh, it doesn't have to be related to dentistry or anything of that nature, but if you could share a piece of wisdom that you've learned in your life's journey, just a life lesson that you feel anybody needs to hear right now, and I, I know you just dropped so much, but what would that piece of wisdom be that you just, through your life journey? The piece of wisdom would probably be that you have to take responsibility over your life and that you have the power to change everything within a minute. And if you start to define your why and why you're here and what is your journey should look like and you make it a health journey and you just implement daily habits like consistency is key and you start with tiny bits with the kaizen principle then it will lead to the better you over time it's just a consistent approach and then you get addicted and what i would always do is find a mentor or find any sort of inspirational model people that are already there that are that are maybe successful when it comes to health or whatever and learn from them and this is in our time, it's so easy. 20 years ago for me, it was really difficult to find a solution. I had to find it myself because there was no health organization and I couldn't YouTube anything or Google. It was just not existing. We had to find our solutions. So now I use it and yeah, 
define your why and whatever it is, take responsibility because it's it's your duty to um, take care of your body. You only have your one body and if you lose health, it's really bad. So work on optimizing it. Oh, yes, absolutely. So good. So good. I can't begin to say how much I agree with that. It is everything. Thank you so much, Dr. Adam. This has been so valuable. I mean, I know you could talk for days about all this stuff because there's there's so much to share that people need to know. So thank you for all your service and, and just providing all the knowledge and doing all the work you do. It's remarkable. Thank you very much, Erica. And I'm very grateful and feel blessed that I was able to share the knowledge with you and your audience. And yeah, let's do it all together. Let's make health fashionable. And you know, guys, it starts in your mouth. Thank you.